you uh, created the series uh, Bloodline for Netflix, uh, and you, you know your previous series was Damages, which was on FX and then DirecTV. And it's a you know s there are similarities between the two shows, but there are also major differences in locale, and and you know this is a more of a family drama. What what inspired this story? You know, as sort of your follow up to to that series. Sure. Um, well. Uh, Todd and I are brothers, and, and Daniel Zellman, who's our other partner that we created both Damages and Bloodline with, um, we've known for over 25 years. And family is something that the three of us have been talking about for many, many years. Uh, whatever we're working on and whatever else is going on in our lives, um, there's been a kind of a constant source of informational exchange and being um, present in each other's lives. and. Um, we started to recognize that some of the overlaps between our families might be interesting to explore. Both Todd and I are from a family of three boys. Daniel's from a family of three boys. In both families, the parents have been married 50 plus years. And so as a launching point, it was to, to take um, what appeared to be very loving, supportive, um, uh, very together families and, and see what's really kind of going on in those families, which are conversations that we've been having for uh, a quarter of a century anyway. So, uh, you know, could you personally relate to these kinds of fraught family dynamics, hopefully without the violent crime, of course? <laughs> yes, violent crime has not really been a huge part of our experience. However, we feel like a lot of what we're exploring is universal. And it's been very gratifying when we bring in actors and directors and writers and other collaborators that everybody has. Uh, everybody has a place where they, they relate to some particular dynamic going on in the Rayburn family. And... Um, and, and it does seem like a very universal uh, exploration. Now, uh, the series is set in Florida. You know, again, that's also quite different from, from Damages. Uh, you know, what, what about that locale uh, inspired you or you know, made you want to set it there and, and tell the story about this family there? Well, from the very beginning when we started to conceive of the show, we had the idea of setting it down in the Florida Keys. And for us, partly it's a combination of there hadn't been much production down in Florida, so it would be something new that we could bring to an audience, uh, seeing the Florida Keys. And in addition to have this family grow up down there, uh, and their family runs a hotel, uh, the parents played by Sissy Spacek and Sam Shepard founded this hotel, and what it represents to people coming down that it's vacation and it's paradise, and then to be able to think of the family that has grown up down there and works there uh, and be able to see a separation between what is public and private and allow us to go deep into the private. Meanwhile, all along the way, there are paying guests that are at the hotel. So it kind of, for us, provides a great framework, not only that it feels like paradise and looks like paradise, but then to you know delve underneath that. And the Florida Keys themselves have a beautiful uh, effect on people, but there is definitely also a, a seedy side, as the 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 keys, you know, many years ago were founded essentially by pirates, uh, and there's a certain lawlessness that that happens down there. So it felt like a, just an ideal setting for us. Uh, were there any you know particular logistical challenges to to shooting in this locale? I mean, obviously the the weather plays a big part in the story, but uh, is it also a part of the uh, the filmmaking? Yeah, where we um, where we shot was an area called uh, Isla Morada, which is in the Florida Keys and Key Largo, um, are the two primary areas that we would kind of shuttle between, and and there is no film infrastructure down there. So our line producer Mark Baker really kind of started from scratch and putting everything together. Um, and, and logistically, it's, you'll see in the show, when the, in the aerial shots, you'll see there's a very, very narrow one or two lane highway that takes you from kind of the mainland Florida all the way down to Key West. And so everybody, there is literally one road that takes you everywhere you need to go. And so that, that was challenging. Um, and uh, the one huge thing is the weather as well, which is you spend all day putting on sunscreen 110 or 112 degrees, and then you spend all night putting on bug spray. Once you've been cooked, the bugs come out to try to, to, to eat you all night. So uh, the actors and the crew really did a remarkable job of rising to the occasion for all those challenges. But we, we hope and we've, we feel that a lot of that comes across in the, in, the, in the kind of the cinematic feel of the show. You really do get a sense of the keys and the environment, and that was very important to us.
Uh, another important aspect of the series, of course, you know, a family drama of this uh, type is the ensemble cast, and, and it's a very large and, and, and diverse uh, uh, ensemble cast, you know, Sissy Spacek and Kyle Chandler and Norbert Leo Butts, who, you know, comes from a lot of theater background. Did you, you know, have a lot of these actors in mind or any of these actors in mind already when you were developing the show, or, you know, how did that casting process come together? Well, it's, there's always a, a lot of luck involved in, in casting any series because it's about timing and availability for actors. When we went out to sell Bloodline, um, we presented uh, the networks like Netflix uh, family tree so that we, they could see who we were thinking about. And for us, it really starts with the parents and the actors who we suggested for these sorts of uh, characters as types in a way were Sam Shepard and Sissy Spacek. So then to jump months later, and we're actually on set in the Florida Keys at the inn, which is right behind us, uh, the Rayburn House, um, and Sam and Sissy are playing uh, the, the matriarch and patriarch of the family. It was just a phenomenal experience. And then from there, uh, in terms of actor availability with Kyle Chandler and Ben Mendelsohn, Norbert Leo Butts, as you said, and Linda Cardellini uh, to round out the, the family, it's really uh, you know, a process of actors' availability and us meeting with them and, and responding to them, uh, and them responding to us in terms of thematically what we're interested in, in doing with the series. And we got very fortunate because we got all of our, our top choices. Uh, one of the unique aspects of, of this series, you know, being on Netflix, is, is how people are able to consume this kind of show. You can watch it in 13 weeks or 13 hours. You can watch it on an iPod or a big screen TV. You know, how, how, does that kind of uh, consumption, you know, uh, influence how you make the show in terms of how you write it and how you film it? It did. It was a new experience for us, obviously. There's, there's very few outlets where you can watch everything uh, at your own time, and, and that did inform how we were going to tell the story, and it, it gave us a certain flexibility and freedom to know that um, people can work at their own pace, and I mean, watch it at their own pace, and therefore we don't need to recap things in a way that you might need to if it was being rolled out every week. You also, we had the luxury of, of thinking that we knew people would start at the first episode, and they probably would watch them consecutively, so that you didn't need to worry about someone missed week two or week four, and are they really going to understand what happens in week seven? So those kinds of um, those kinds of resources as a storyteller that you know an audience is engaged and is watching things sequentially in the way that you were hoping that they might was it was a great freedom, uh, and, and it was an exciting thing to take advantage of. Now, uh, you've had past success uh, at the Emmys with uh, Damages. It was nominated for Best Drama Series. Uh, Glenn Close, of course, won. And, and given the you know, talent in front of the camera and, and, and you know, Netflix's recent success, this could you know, potentially get back to the Emmys in a few months. Uh, you know, uh, are you excited about the possibility of potentially you know, getting another show back you know, to the Emmys? It isn't so much that. I think that what we're excited about um, is that there's a lot of terrific work that um, we're excited for people to see. You know, we poured our, our hearts and souls into it, our cast and crew did the same, and, and it's the kind of thing where hopefully everyone steps back who's been involved and can be proud of it and is excited for the world to see it. And then we know what our process has been and our process with the actors, and the collaboration's been so wonderful across the board with everybody that we've been working with. That it's it's that's where our enthusiasm is. So hopefully, if people um, are excited by the ride they go on, and, and people who, who watch it um, have the experience that collectively everyone who's worked on it ha has tried to put into it, um, that's that's very gratifying. And and if, if things happen after that, that the more the merrier. But it's it's really uh, it's really been an, a, a great experience creatively and and. Um, to bring in a whole new set of players after damages and have such a wonderful experience is, uh, is very gratifying.